Sustainability. Never has a word had so many meanings to so many different people. Bioenergy. Never has a word connected so many people across an entire nation. It's not just what these two words together can produce, but what these two words combined can help us to save. Let us show you how. A heart beats like a rolling thunder Rise up, cry, shake your slumber Hear the bell toll And sunder chains from souls Breathe sweet, release, clear off our knees And not about the slaves to no one Relative to other things we could be doing on land in the southeast, the pines are doing good things for us. We're studying on three watersheds the hydrologic, water budget, and water quality effects of intensive um, biomass production using short rotation loblolly pine trees. We, here we are using standard models like MIKSHI and SWAT model to identify what the potential effects of uh, high intensive biofuel production on hydrology and water quality. And we are developing several scenarios uh, how they affect the land and water resource. One of the things that we do on this project is not only are we collecting data on stream flows, water chemistry, groundwater levels and groundwater chemistry, but we're using that data to help inform models so we can look at this over a landscape scale over long periods of time. Here in East Tennessee, this is naturally a forest community. Having these forests is of great benefit to the environment and to the local people. But we don't have that much demand for non-timber products. Timber is what drives the market here. After the trees are cleared off the land, there is certain wood that can't be used and it goes to the meltdown pile like you see here. If there was a bioenergy market, this kind of wood could be used and would provide more ways to enhance the value of the land, providing jobs, and providing areas where we could keep the land in forest. This whole Von Orr switchgrass uh, to ethanol experiment has been a great place for us to study the suite of indicators that we've developed to look at environmental, social, and economic sustainability of a bioenergy production system. And through this analysis, we've seen that switchgrass has a lot of environmental benefits as well as social benefits. So one of the things that we're often asked is, is what's the farmer acceptance rate? What's the farmer response to these dedicated energy crops? And from our perspective at Genera, I'm not sure that we could have had a better response. What they, are, what they really need is a market, obviously, for the offtake of those crops. They want to do what's right, they want to do the most sustainable thing, and they want to earn a return to their land so they can maintain a quality of life as well. Neem River County, we've been really excited to have NEOS build their uh, bioenergy plant here for a lot of reasons. We think it put Vero Beach and Neem River County on the map as a leader in sustainable technology. Our aim is to develop this technology, not only to use the vegetative waste, but also household waste, dispose of these materials and turn them into a sustainable green fuel. We have a large landfill right next to us. All you have to do is, it, you can see it from uh, I-95 traveling south, and you just have to drive by it and realize you know, that sooner or later this thing is going to fill up. What we need is a circle of life, and basically that's what we have here, is we're taking our waste streams and our waste products and using that to create electricity, which we need to, to progress as a society, and, to and of course for fuel for our vehicles. 
if we use unique ways like we've developed here at Algenol where we capture that carbon back out of the atmosphere and then use it again for fuels, we're actually recycling carbon um, through the atmosphere, through algae and ethanol. We're developing new technologies to go after fuel that we haven't gone after, that minimizes the impact on the environment. And one thing that we did here at Algenol is we actually did testing of that algae in the environment in advance of us using it outside. The algae is never invasive to Florida and to me that's exceptionally important uh, that we did that study in advance. Soperton is the million pine city. The timber industry in Soperton is a sustaining factor and has been for many years. What we're hoping to bring to that area is uh, yet another example of, of how technology can provide new jobs uh, new opportunities. They have a resource locally that that everybody knows is, is valuable, but the question is how best to add value to that resource. It'll be a part of this community and we're using what we have on site that was already uh, established here anyway. This is showing a hybrid process of both biological uh, and chemical processing to get an alternative fuel and chemical market using waste forestry products that are everywhere in the US. Part of what Lanza Tech is doing is working on that sustainability and the technology they're using can be used to make a sustainable, um, better world. able to build on a long history of research at SUNY ESF studying willow as a biomass and bioenergy crop and then what we've done is taken that information and been able to apply it to this site. If we had installed just a standard engineered cover it would require hundreds of thousands of cubic yards of imported material, a huge carbon footprint. There's lots of these attributes of willow that uh, are brought to bear in this kind of situation, in this kind of condition, that makes this really a very sustainable solution, but also broadens it in terms of bringing sustainable and renewable biomass into the community. We really make an effort to uh, get out there and work with the harvesters and the loggers and the local economy to help sustain the economy up here in the North Country. What we predominantly use here for our wood supply is the stuff that most loggers would leave in the woods with the chipper market here at Lionsdale and Black River, they're now able to chip that and supply us with our wood chips to uh, burn and make power. It's become more than just a, a growing willow, it's a, a whole biomass energy development project to try and find alternative uses, to try and work with people when they want to do a project. Bioenergy is about increasing the sustainability of society. Society, especially in the rural areas, areas where we do have biomass now, areas where we can grow a lot more willow. It's profitable now, it's economically sustainable now, but what I like the most is it's long-term sustainable in the rural culture, in the rural regions, where we really need the jobs. I'm optimistic that uh, in the Pacific Northwest, you know, something like that will happen at some point. We'll take one of these sites and, and, and start to build a biorefinery. That's what we want to do here at University of Washington, too. We're, we're trying to redo our, our laboratories so it, it produces, a, it kind of shows how this would work and kind of lead the way uh, for the industry. What would be great to happen is that 
these pulp mills are really well set up to to diversify the portfolio of products that that they produce because why why a pulp mill can't be a buy refinery overnight they can there's lots of especially on the energy side of uh, potential for integration between the two the pulp mill already has uh, lots of steam and heat and electricity and, and these things can be integrated and it also has all this feedstock infrastructure. I mean, they're handling tons of biomass already. Here in Seattle, we're surrounded by forests. We're surrounded in our urban centers with green belts, parks, uh, street trees, uh, incredible residential landscapes. And then the public forests and private forests that surround all of the cities of the Northwest. Uh, collectively produce tremendous amounts of organic waste of various types. That's a resource that could be turned into biofuel, liquid fuels, or thermal energy. Feedstocks that we work with span the range of uh, purpose feedstocks like starting from logs, uh, short rotation forestry, poplar plantation trees, and in, in that case you've you're producing a feedstock that's very optimized. So you're controlling the growing, you're controlling the production. And in each of these pathways, particularly the veneer pathway to make this flowable, pourable crumble, this, this material is designed to use about one-fourth, one-fifth of the energy of a hammer mill. So our objective as a company is how do you take each of these materials and minimize the investment of capital and energy? And how do you develop conver conversion or processing methods that reduce the technical risk and the operation risk for everybody in the supply chain? So if Balfour's is that thing that brings people, as a, have, make, make them have a stronger sense of community um, in the name of green energy, it can also bring people together or that continuity of that bringing people together can rub off to other aspects of sustainability such as um, I don't know, maybe they will choose to address a wetland problem that they have. So it, it, it has the potential to seed and nurture um, other forms of uh, social sustainability issues or social action on sustainability issues. So what I would think about very much is when we're talking about sustainability that we don't forget that sustainability is about people. can grow about 800 gallons of ethanol per acre with miscanthus versus about 500 gallons with corn. So I thought if farmers were going to be growing energy, um, why not use the crop most efficient at doing it? We have an area across the street here that is, uh, has a stream running through it. Right now we have a filter strip planted along the stream. The idea of that is to filter out excess nutrients that may enter the stream a lot of uh, local farmers and local citizens who are really deeply engaged in this project. Many different things we do to help remove nutrients from the water. Bioenergy crops or other alternative crops into those areas that we can also maximize the profit from those acres and also have something growing out there that's taking up those nutrients. When we started our project we really did not have a home. So I came in thinking oh my goodness I have to sell these you know all these farmers who know their land very well that I want to put a patch of uh, willows or switcher or something else in the middle of their field and they're gonna say I'm crazy, right? But ultimately I think I was able to make them understand what I was trying to do and the response has been phenomenal. When we talk about our strengths in rural Kansas and particular, particularly in southwestern Kansas, I think we need to draw to our strengths. And our strength is certainly agriculture. Our goal is not to make this unstable for our, for our standpoint where we hurt the uh, the uh, soil from an erosion standpoint, we want that to be sustainable where you can come back next year and remove more residue again. We have something nobody else has ever um, done on this size. I mean, I've gotten 
10 years of college experience in you know, two years that I've been here. Over the last eight years, it's amazing the new businesses that have come in. Uh, part of that certainly has to be contributed to Abengoa. You know, just like with the, with the Abengoa project, it, it becomes personal and you want them to do well because if they do well, we do well. We talk a lot in Iowa about our leadership position on production, but that really is only part of the story. We also are home to world-class research and development. We're home to incredible innovation. We're going to have to learn to maintain soil fertility while reducing the inputs of energy, water, and fertilizer. If we can achieve sustainable agriculture, then sustainable bioenergy is within our grasp. So if we want to protect the land that we use to, to provide food or feed for ourselves, we need to incorporate uh, cropping systems and crops that help keep that soil on the landscape, keep those nutrients on the landscape, so that we have a, a more sustainable system overall. Those crops that we use can be perennials, they can be used for energy. There is no reason, no reason why these pieces don't fit together nicely. We just need to put them together. When you look at a, a standard, highly productive Midwestern uh, cornfield, even the best ground out there still has significant variability across the field. And it was this process of trying to build out uh, a, an effective decision tool for corn stover removal that we really started to be able to characterize how the variability within fields uh, impact not only that question, but how do we improve business performance? We see all these different feedstocks that people are looking into and, and the reality of what they, they have in their area. And so the good thing about what we're doing is that we're fairly fuel flexible, feedstock flexible, and so um, there's potential everywhere. This could exist on a scale of that would be about a co-op size uh, type plant. Uh, you know, this could really bring the economics back to rural Iowa. Yeah, you know, when I look at the public and public perception that we have today, I want to make sure that the public understands that we're no different than a doctor or an attorney or, or a professional person out there. We have taken an oath to help feed and fuel the world in the most sustainable, environmentally friendly, but profitable way we can. And we've taken that obligation on because we understand the importance of passing this on to the next generation and decades and decades from now, how they're going to feed and fuel the world. You know, here in the upper Midwest, our core business model is either growing corn and soybeans that are to be sold into the refining market or, or into the export market or into the feed market. Now we're asking and telling our growers, we want a long-term stable supply of biomass material that can be fed to a biorefinery. So those are the challenges before us, understanding what we need to do to do it sustainably, do it so it's, it can be carried on year after year, generation after generation, and not negatively impact the soil, the air, or the water around us. We have some really important decisions to make in the next several years about what different transportation technologies we're going to go after as a nation. And those choices shouldn't be based on emotion or gut feeling. Those choices should be based on, on data and analyses that help us make these choices uh, with, some, with some rational decision making behind them. So what I would think about very much is when we're talking about sustainability that we don't forget that sustainability is about people. We are connected. We are connected. We are connected. This is possible. It works. We are connected. Growing energy. We are connected. The next generation. My family is here to stay. We are connected. The whole picture. Conservation agriculture. I love forests. Renewable and sustainable biofuels. We are connected. There's no such thing as waste. Bioenergy. We are connected. We are connected. We are connected. Get involved. Oh, rebel hearts unite.